and bread this size, it won't split in that end, you know. No point doing that while it's in the open air. So we start putting the shed over it. So we're doing a lot of banging, as you can imagine. And close by, with two professional complainers. It was the Robert, you know. And it was out of smoke on ours. And sometimes they'll complain, and we'd be at some end of country, but... There you go. Anyway, uh, a complaint went in. Uh, Fred Dim was putting another shed up, and there was a lot of noise. So... These two guys came down from planning the farm and we were just finishing roof off and they said we had a complaint, they put another shed up and a lot of banging going on. We said yeah, so we won't last two boards then, so we quiet down shortly. And they said, have you got planning permission for this shed? And Fred said, well it's only a little shed, we didn't think we need it. Because he had none for these, but he didn't bother telling them. <laughs> Anyway, he, he said, uh, yeah, you'll need planning permission. So, Fred being Fred, now he has to take them all around the yard and tell them a few tales and tell them about his future plans and all the rest of it. And when they get to shaft, the stub there, no covering on like there is now, it was open all and getting the looking in, he said, I want to sink this 70 feet or so and then drive a roadway out to the river. Well, they nearly had a bloody heart attack, didn't they? <laughs> now, he's, he's already been all over country, data talks and rallies and this and that, and told half of country, and that doesn't matter. But when you start telling to officials on site, you know, it puts them in a queer position, doesn't it? You know, and they're not sure what to do now. How many times they get applications for the mine shaft outside kitchen door? You know, they're in a queer <laughs> position. So, before they went, they decided he needs planning permission for that shed, winding shed. That's connected to the shaft with the winding rope, so you'd better include the shaft in planning permission. So, of course, we're past the stop. And we said, you'd have to me, why don't you take them all around here and not tell them about the shaft, what the damage we've done. So, we have to start work. Um, so, we have to go around the yard now, get all these measurements, so far, shaft front, toes, and uh, road and outright sheds and all the rest of it. So he does one of his fancy drawings. We send that in, we sent it back, he said we wanted in metric. <laughs> <laughs> in field, don't we, of course. Anyway, we're going around here checking all these measurements and um, we're on drive over there above fed sticks. There's Ian, boy the lad, having a cup of tea and me and him's just you know, clipboard and pen taking the measurement. And Fred said, right, I just need one more measurement. I said, what's that? He said, I want a measurement from top of pit shaft to down there where the tunnel's coming out. I said, right, I'll tell Matthew to bring his tackle on Saturday. He was a surveyor who came on Saturdays. He said, no, 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 we're not doing it the modern way, we've got to do it the old way. I said, what's the old way? So he then starts to explain about firing fire this weighted order on a string in this vase out across over a branch the loose level with the earth. I collapsed laughing then. And then when I came down here, I said to Ian, I said, I think it's probably Robin Hood. Anyway, the plan was, there's no fence here then, this was just a dirt fort, and it sloped from here down. And we stood there, and the plan is you fire it there over a branch that boots level with pit yard. That goes down there. That guy down there shouts, right, I've got it. We tie a white disc on it here. Shout down, pull slow. And he pulls to Jimmy, who has a builder's plank and a spirit level over there, shouts, stop. Jimmy shouts, stop. We shout down to him, tie a knot in it. And then we recover the locks and put the knot to the right disc is the height. Would you believe it, Saturday, when Matthew came with his surveying equipment, there was only six inch difference. And we said, well, spring stretches a bit, doesn't it? Which you have to do. Which you have to A couple of things I think you should have highlighted. As we stood there and Fred's pulling back on the bar, uh, on board, he's humming with the hotel overture. 
Well, they're not lifted, so I'm going to hang on. And the other one is, you see where we've cut that branch off there? There's a branch coming over here with a few bits on. One of the arrows hit that, came back, and it stuck in ground between us like that. If you look at the original film, you'd see it, but uh, while they've not zoomed in, then everybody sees it first time, I don't know. I don't make film. Um, and we've tried that time and time again, but we can't get it right because we can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and all this, all this happened two weeks before it was filmed. It all happened, and at Saturday, this was in midweek, and at Saturday, when all the rest of the lads come, we stood over there telling the tale what had happened and having a laugh. And uh, David Hall, film director, he was a friend of Fred's, he just happened to be coming in as a friend, basically, and he overheard us having a, a, a laugh and part of the tail, and he came over and he said, go through that again. So we told him what had happened. He said, I'll bring the guys down and we'll film that. That's what I got from <laughs> Right, thanks for